Parent in Me is based on the RIE philosophy. RIE is um, R-I-E. It stands for Resources for Infant Educarers. Um, an educator is a person that is taking care of a child while educating them, caring for them, nurturing them. Um, Diana Suskin is the teacher. I grew up in Syracuse, New York. I graduated from University of Illinois. Um, did my doctorate there and I did my um, master's at Syracuse University. And then I moved to California and I um, got my first job at Pacific Oaks. And at the time at Pacific Oaks, Magda Gerber was offering a course. And so I took a course with her and we really bonded. So this was in 19, I think, 79 is when I met her. And I took a course and I really got involved and I took RI 1 and RI 2 and RI 3. So what's the RI philosophy? RI stands for Resources for Infant Educators. And I was trained with it with Magda Gerber, and she was trained in Lhotse in Budapest. And it's a real respectful way of looking at children. I used the RI philosophy as a, as a method to have the college students um, look at natural gross motor development and also socialization. So we use it as a tool. The philosophy of RI is very simple. The first component is the basic trust. And basic trust means that the child, that you believe the child's an initiator, they can be an explorer and they're a self-learner, that they, um, they can do on their own if given the chance. The environment needs to be safe and cognitively nurturing. Um, and it, these sound easy to do, but they're really hard. Uninterrupted play is the one that um, is very difficult for most adults and that they want to be the, they want to do for the child instead of allow the child to, to explore on their own. And that they need their time to discover a toy or to see how something works and not to tell that this is how you play with it. And I basically that's it. Freedom to explore, it continues, um, that they can explore um, and see how wonderful the world is and, and understand physics. Active participation, um, meaning that they're part of, Magda Gerber coined this phrase called educare, and so you educate while you're caring. So during snack time and during diapering time, the child is the initiator as much as possible and part of it, like they bring the diaper to the diapering table or they um, pour their own juice, or they decide do they want the red cup or the blue cup, but they're part of something that happens to them as far as diapering 7,000 times during their life. Sensitive observation. Sensitive observation, really that you're present, that you're there, that, you're, that you have nothing else in the world that you care about, that you really are enjoying what the child is doing. And, and that's the best present that you can give to anyone to pay attention. Consistency, that you have limits, that you decide whatever that are important to you and then be consistent with them. In our class we have a yellow rug, that we need to stay on the yellow rug and it's safe. And one of the parents the other day was saying about this yellow rug that her child, and she didn't know the importance why we were doing it, her child was out by the street and went on the curb and she said you need to come back up on the sidewalk, it's safe, and he goes yellow rug. So there is a correlation and they do understand that it, it's you're just being consistent. And then the bottom line of RIE is respect. And that our whole world needs to really res respect people um, and, um, and how, how do you show respect? You know, how do you really show respect to another person? Um, it's, a it's a lifelong process. It's, it's one thing to read the books and to learn about it, but to see it acted out in practice really just like it brings it home it makes it like real and you just get it um, we have the um, parents and the other students sit around the rug so that we can observe it gives the children quality time to be observed and they know that they're there for the support that they need and for anything that they the children if they need to 
go to their parents. They know they're there, and we just mm -hmm. observe. And we usually wait about 10, 15 minutes, and we speak about what we've seen. Mm -hmm. And it's just a real mm -hmm. learning process. We've been doing this for a long time. I do this at home. We have a room like this. And just watch over them. I think it's uh, so good for me to get to spend uh, quality time with her. Like I, in the morning, I'll get to do it for 15 minutes before I get to go. So 20 minutes, whatever. So it's it's a good way to kind of get as much quality time with her as I can, even though I'm not. They're entertaining her. I'm just sitting doing the same thing that we're doing here, but watching her play with all her toys. The big thing for toys that we provide is that they're not big, expensive toys, but they're really basic and simple. There's metal bowls. Anything that makes sound is something that the child can see where the sound comes from and that it's not covered up. So if it was a rattle, you could see what was making the rattling noise. Um, any climbing structures that we have are small structures so that the child can climb up and down in themselves and not have to be placed in anything. There's no swings that the child has to be placed in. Um, everything is basic. There's orange juice lids, big water jugs that the children can put, we have curlers in so they can learn their basic skills without us, having, without us teaching them so they're totally free to explore the toys how they want. Um, Self-induced movement is let, letting the children move on their own without the help of a walker or a swing or a bouncy seat or any of that kind of equipment. It's just laying them on their back and letting them move whatever part of their body they're ready to move whenever they want to move it. And they'll do everything on their own. They'll, they'll sit up when they're ready, turn over. They'll crawl when they're ready and they don't need any help with that at all. They'll learn it on their own. I, I'm really not into television or the computer or the flashcards or uh, I've been just as turned off as the Rye, uh, you know, Magna Gerber and whoever invented that with all this pushing to have them perform and really into just letting them be um, children and letting them be people. And I um, was first interested in it because she was sort of a colicky baby, cried a lot, and I was just looking for anything that might uh, give me some insight and help. <laughs> so after she became a certain age and, and was more on her own, um, crawling and walking and stuff, I found a loss as to how to interact with her because before I was just carrying her everywhere. And so she was with me whatever I was doing. I did curtail my activity somewhat, but not a lot. So it was just um, put her in the sling and take her with me, and that felt very good for me. Um, did a lot of walking, and, and uh, but then after she was out of the sling, it was like, okay, now what am I going to do um, to fill the, all that time? Um, I need to interact with her more personally and at a more conscious level, I guess. So the rye kind of was, I, I was just exposed to that just when I was asking the question, okay, now what do I do? It's time to really respect her, and instead of doing things for her and um, quickly moving through the motions of changing her, or feeding her, it's really taught me to involve her and talk to her and let her know what I'm doing, and just really treat her as a little person and not just um, something that you do things for, or do things to. And, um, I think it's helped her to um, be a little more independent I and mean, she still needs me but she can kind of go off and, and do things on her own and for herself and not be doing things just for me and for my attention. She um, is a lot more capable of playing on her own independently. Um, her curiosity I think it's been heightened. She's not fearful of trying new things and looking at new toys or new spaces. And she's very comfortable with herself and people um, that she's never met before. It's really a new way of thinking and I plan on continuing it through my education. I really want to um, be involved in the development of infants and toddlers because um, I think that's where the foundation starts. I think if you can give them a sense of power and self-control and importance right from the beginning, then they're golden for practically the rest, the rest of their lives, essentially, because they can make good decisions and they, they feel a self-esteem, self self-confidence.
months. Um, I'm having a child in a couple of months, so this is all very relevant to me, and I feel very lucky to have happened into the class. I, I've learned a lot, and I think I'm going to be a much more like authentic and, and aware parent. I guess my hopes for the future is that this can expand, or maybe that there could be an early childhood track that they do a preschool and an infant toddler program, and they can, I mean, I would love it, that they are really confident in working in daycare and, and preschools and infant toddler programs, um, that, that we have an opportunity to be the leaders in this area in, on the East Coast to share this method and this respectful approach to working with children, but also it's an approach of working with college students. And, um, I just hope it continues.